the Spice Girls are recording a new album together. No, that's wrong. They are recording a new album apart. The Famous Five couldn't agree where to meet, so Jerry's taping her bit in France, Victoria's doing hers at home in Madrid, Mel B's flown to Los Angeles, Emma's staying in London, which leaves Sporty Spice. Where's she going to be? Let's ask her. Ladies and gentlemen, Mel C. Yes, you're going to be in Wales. What a dirty, rotten lie that all is. <laughs> what, that you're going to be in Wales? That, um, that the Spice Girls are recording new material. They're not? Absolutely. Well, as far as I'm aware, yeah. no truth. Maybe they're that. doing it without you. Maybe. <laughs> Either way, it's a blessed relief, isn't it, frankly? <laughs> <laughs> Listen, it was quite disappointing for us all that you didn't get together for Live Aid. Mm. I mean, even Pink Floyd buried the hatchet, didn't they? Mm -hmm. It wasn't really a case of burying the hatchet because, you know, we're all, we're all on speaking terms. We're all, we're not best buddies, but, you know, we keep in touch. And we were all disappointed too, but unfortunately, Melanie B had commitments she couldn't get out of. That's the story, anyway. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> what you mean, it was her fault? <laughs> well, well, yeah, actually, yeah. yeah. Because everybody else had said yes to it, but Melanie couldn't get there, so. I mean, did you watch it? Did you feel you were missing out? Oh, yeah. I, I would have loved to have been there and to show my support. You know, it's an amazing cause, cause and something, you know, we all feel very strongly about, but um, it wasn't meant to be. Did you try and persuade her? To be honest with you, I didn't actually speak to her. Oh, but you do speak to her? I, do you know what? I've not seen her since last year, so... Right. OK, right. well, I think we're getting the message there. <laughs> Importantly, you've been busy recently mm -hmm. making a new album, haven't you? Yeah. This is your third album, but the difference between this and the other ones is you're paying for it yourself. Is that normal? Um, well, it's kind of becoming more commonplace. But hang on, most people pay for their albums to be produced themselves if they can't get a record company deal. Yeah, I mean, I suppose it probably would be quite tough for me to get a deal because, unfortunately, in this country, um, it's quite difficult for, in certain areas, for people to forget about the Spice Girls and to accept me as an individual. Oh. So, because um, Spice Girls are pretty much hated. Um, are they? Are, are the Spice I don't think. Hated? I don't think. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, a bit. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Not so much by the general public, no. because they've always been so lovely, sweet and positive to me, but yeah. in certain areas of the media yeah. and the industry, you know, anything Spice related is, um, you know, is no go. I have to tell you, because I've been looking at the lyrics mm -hmm. of this, lovely tunes, I think, do you still call them tunes? Well, you can do. Yes, OK. Well, <laughs> and, no, no, no. And, um, some of it just worried me a bit. Uh, this is from Take Your Pleasure, okay. which you wrote. Okay. Uh, you take your pleasure from my pain, inflict your damage. I expect your delusion is part of you hating yourself. So take your pleasure from my pain. Now, it doesn't rhyme, of course. <laughs> um, well, nothing ever rhymes these days. But it's also a bit sad, isn't it? I mean, I think, Mel, if a child of mine wrote that, I might take her to the doctor, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that is a reaction to things I've experienced, being in the public eye, being in the music industry. And is life so sad? Absolutely not. Life is wonderful. I'm very happy. Um, but, you know, life is, you know, it's full of ups and downs. Oh, well, couldn't you, when you're writing, couldn't you go to a, to a happy place? There's some happy places on the record. Now, if we can just look back, because there you were, the, in history, the most successful girl band ever. Can we just have a look? This is your very first performance on Top of the Pops. If you want my future, forget my past. If you want Like a dream? 
sometimes it's a bit weird it feels like it didn't really happen it's yeah. pretty it's hard to get your head around what I mean while it was happening it was it was so chaotic that you didn't really accept what was happening yeah. to you and then after the event it was like wow did it really happen and do you think your phenomenal success do you think without Victoria's strong vocal presence you would have made it? <laughs> I think that you know the Spice Girls there was something about the Spice Girls whatever it was yeah. the chemistry between us we did have great songs whatever you say about the Spice Girls great marketing good timing all these things helped towards us being and the backflips and it was all let's that. not forget it was, the backflips it was all me it was all about the backflips yeah. <laughs> to be honest with you yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Well, what was it like to wake up one morning and you weren't a Spice Girl anymore? Did, did your life seem a bit empty? It was a huge relief, to be honest with you. Was it? Mm. Because, because, well, you know, I did experience some amazing things and yeah. I travelled all over the world and, you know, parts and times were really good fun. Yeah. But overall, it was, it was hard. It was hard work. It was really hard. You know, as quite a young girl, I was in my early 20s, really coming to terms with such a big life change and media attention and, and all these things. So I think eventually, you know, the time... Oh, there's a fly. Hello. <laughs> so you have got a fan left. <laughs> Just occasionally, I think I'm doing what you think. Just forget. <laughs> Everyone tell me you were nice on this show. Yes, I am. Yeah, I know you Who are. said that? <laughs> and what was it like having just a fantastic amount of money? I mean, you're very, very, very rich, aren't Amazing. you? Amazing. I was. Um, <laughs> but it was. I mean, you know, I come from, you know, not far from you, and, uh, you know, very working-class background, and I was on the dole. I mean, a lot of us were on the dole when we actually first got together, yeah. and, and I've paid it all back in tax. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, to be able to go into a shop and just buy whatever you wanted was unbelievable. And have you really gone through was. the money? I've gone through a lot of it. Have you? You've yeah. still got a bit left. Yeah, I've got a bit saved for a rainy day. And you've changed your lifestyle completely. Absolutely. You're See, living in Wales. Thing. Yeah, I that's mean... That's a strange choice of venue for a Liverpudlian. I thought you might say that. <laughs> <laughs> I, um, I live between London and Wales. Okay. And um, I really, I just wanted somewhere away from the, you know, the, the chaos of London. And, you know, it's a beautiful place. I've got a house in the Wye Valley. Yeah. And I love it out there because it's just so quiet and it's very rural and... And you've got a lovely partner. I do, do, yes. A fella. Yeah. Called... Yeah, it is a fella. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and a tattoo's all right in the Y Valley. <laughs> I've had no complaints. Oh, show us one of your tattoos. Um, yeah, they're all covered up, aren't they? Um, well, there's one. Don't show us the one in the Y Valley. <laughs> We uh, wish you all the best of luck, and it's lovely to see much. you. It's great to see another Liverpudlian doing so Yay. well. Ladies and gentlemen, Mel C.